Nowadays, I find it a little bit harder and more challenging to spot a fake from a real Rolex. It's almost like they're chasing perfection and they're not too far away from getting there. Thank you for tuning into this video. My name is Eric Rivera. So I'm gonna go over five things that I used to spot this fake Daytona. Number one is the thickness of the watch. So the first thing that I noticed when I saw this watch and it was handed to me was right off the bat, you know, when he pulled it out, I felt like it was just, you know, a normal Daytona stainless steel ceramic bezel. But the second I grabbed the watch, it felt thick. Like the profile of the case was just too thick. I mean, that's the first thing that grabbed my attention when I saw it. And right off the bat, when I grabbed it, I said, hmm, this feels kind of funny. And the second I felt that, I already knew it, it was off. I went ahead later on and actually measured it. And believe it or not, it's actually 1.1 millimeter thicker than the authentic version. So my hunch right off the bat was immediately correct. You see, one thing that I've noticed with the experience is that they go through a lot of trouble to try to make these watches as close as possible, but they'll always leave little things behind. You know, some people will say, well, why didn't they just make it exactly the same size? Well, there's many reasons why. Sometimes maybe the movement is not exactly the same. They need to cram in the movement. Maybe the angle of the bezel, when you look at it from the side profile, is just not sitting exactly the same way as the previous. Maybe the glass hangs out a little bit thicker. So all those things combined can actually obviously make up a millimeter more. For this particular watch, what I noticed was the bezel was sitting in a slightly taller angle and the rear cap in the back was actually thicker. So those little things right there made the watch just feel taller right off the bat when I grabbed it. Number two was the color. Now, believe it or not, this watch does not have the same color. You think, how can you ruin a white dial? And I thought the same thing too. Immediately when I first looked at it, I didn't notice. But actually the replica has more of a yellowish tone to the dial. I don't know if that's either the paint on the dial or maybe perhaps whatever material they use, the glass, the sapphire, whatever they use for the glass, maybe it's just not crystal clear. I think personally it might have something to do with the crystal that's giving it a little bit of a yellow tone to it and it's not so clear like it should be. So that's one thing you wanna look at. Sometimes the color will give these watches away, whether it's this Daytona or any other watch. For example, a two-tone blue Submariner, the blue on the dial is very iconic. So that might give you a little hint that something's going wrong there. Number three is the print on the dial. Now, of the naked eye, it might look perfect. And if you clearly can see it with the naked eye, then that's obviously a sign that it's fake or has a terrible aftermarket dial installed, okay? But when you look at it under a loop, a 10 times magnification loop, you're gonna be able to notice that the edges of the writing are just not as crisp. This particular variation here, the layout is almost exact. I mean, everything is where it needs to be. The only thing that I realized was that the edges of the paint, it's almost like it bled out a little bit, not so crisp and sharp. Rolex, of course, when they do this printing, they got the correct machines that leave it absolutely perfect with no distortion and no rough edges on any of the paint overall. And the paint that Rolex uses almost looks a little bit thicker, like it stands out a little bit above the dial whereas the replica ones will kind of be a little more thinner and watered down. Number four is something I use on every watch. Even when it does look perfect right off the bat, I will still grab a loop. Again, this is something that you're gonna need a 10 times magnification loop to look at it, but it's gonna be the rivet on the top needle on every handset. On this particular watch, for me, it's a dead giveaway because the authentic always has a perfect finish on that rivet. But on the fake one, clearly it has inferior finish. It just looks rough, you know what I mean? The other one is nicely polished and smooth while the other one is rough. Now, I have seen a set of hands before that were improperly dismounted and mounted and had just damage to it. 
That's not to be confused. But if you look close enough, you're gonna see that the rivet is bad and the center pin just doesn't look right. The center rivet has like the finish of like an Ikea washer. You know, you can clearly tell it's just not it. That's something that I like to use for almost every watch. I always grab a loop and I look at it. And of course I do this so that the consumer doesn't have to do it. Obviously when they make these fake watches, they might not have the technology or the proper machinery to finish something so small, so nice. So number five, and last but not least, is gonna be the movement or the movement functions. The reason that I say both is because sometimes you just don't have access to be able to open the watch. So for me, there's always gonna be something that gives a little bit of clues. On the Daytonas, one of the things that I always do the second I get one of these watches in my hand, not just to see if it's authentic or not, if there's any doubt at all, but also to see if it works, is actuate the chrono. When you hit the button on a Daytona, it just has a very distinct feeling. It feels solid and precise. This particular fake, they actually spent a lot of time trying to make that button feel perfect because it actually has the right feel to it. When you start, stop, and reset, it feels exactly the way that it should feel. However, when you go on to actuating the time and opening in the crown and turning the hands, feels completely off. It feels like it's gonna do a full spin, you know, just, you could just, you know, it's all loose and Nicki Minaj. It just feels all crazy. So that's one thing for me that's a dead giveaway is always actuate the hands, the date. On a Daytona, like this one, what gave it away to me was actually when I actuated the hands. You see, the chrono had me a little bit convinced. I mean, as far as the movement is, you know, I said, damn, maybe this is one of those like one-to-one -one replica movements which are out there. But forget it, when you go to actuate the time, it just totally feels Fisher Price, does not feel right. Now, if you actually have the moment to be able to open the case back, that's probably where it all just pours out. It's clearly not the same. You know, even the orientation of the whole movement is just not right. Yes, of course, they put all these little clues in there to try to convince you that it is what it is, like saying 4130 printed on actually very nice. The rubies actually have a very decent color and the finishing looks pretty decent to the naked eye. But overall, there's gonna be things that you realize that are not supposed to be there. There's dummy wheels and stuff that are not even working. But again, you don't have to be an expert. You just gotta be a pretty good observer. You can pull a real actual picture of a 4130 movement on Google, do some comparison and be able to draw a conclusion yourself. So although these watches are getting a little bit hard to bust, it's up to us to use these simple things like I just mentioned to really be able to sort it out. Remember, out of these five things that I said, I never really use just one. It's usually a combination of them that fully 100% guarantees it in my head and tells me that the watch is real or fake. So I'm hoping this provides some help for you guys at home. And thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please like and share. Also, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell till it looks like this. I got some interesting projects coming up ahead.